Thank you, Dr. Shen. And we just swap our role. So the next session, um, I'm going to give a talk of Candida Oris Emergence. So please excuse me, this is really new for me. And I think that this species would be um, not really familiar for most of us as well. But why do we have to talk about this? So I saw this new a couple of days ago on the 4th of November. So this reported in CNN and ABC News talking about this species. CDC reports the first US cases of rare and deadly fungal disease. There are 13 cases of Canada oris infection has been found in the United States uh, since 2013. Also in the CNN, CDC identified the first U.S. cases of dark disease and fungal infection. So this highlighted it two days ago. So, oh, sorry. Get to know about the species. Candida oris was first described in 2009 from the external ear canal of a patient in Japan. And after that, the first case bus strip infection has been reported in 2011 from Korea. This patient receiving fluconazole and amphotericin B therapy, and he had the persistent fungemia. Within five years, candida oris fungemia and deep seated infection was reported in several countries, including India, South Africa, Kuwait, Brazil, Colombia, Venezuela, United States, UK, and Pakistan. So actually, this candida is the emerging fungal pathogen that has been emerged in uh, at least 11 countries in four continents within five years. So, however, the true burden of this candida species has not been uh, explored. So we don't know, we probably have more cases than, um, than this, but we still don't know the true burden. And the cause of emergence, unknown. And assuming that it could be caused by a selective pressure from extensively used of antifungal agent during the last decade. So is it serious? The United CDC requests all the laboratories in the United States who identify candida oris, either confirmed species or suspected uh, candida oris, reported to the uh, local public health department or the CDC. So, and recommend the laboratory personnel to uh, get the co co isolated, collected in the, in the lab to identify back to uh, January the 1st of 2013 as well. So this means that this species probably has been existing in the United States for uh, several years back but we don't know because of the really, uh, it's a difficulty in identification of this candida species. So in the news, um, in the CDC report, um, they investigate the seven cases of the infected case of candida oris. So this is the old collection of the isolate back to 2013. And it is the first case in the United States. At that time, they don't know yet. So there are seven cases since uh, from May 2013 to August 2016 uh, in the patient in four states, New York, New Jersey, Maryland, and Illinois. Uh, five of them uh, also were the isolate from the, the blood, and four of them died. But whether or not, we don't know whether die from or die with See all this. It could be die from the underlying disease because all of the patients had severe medical condition, and they also doing the, the DNA sequences and uh, compare the, the the outbreak, and they found that this the patients admitted in the same hospital has really a closely related of DNA sequence uh, indicative of the nosocomial infection as well as the, these two patients in Illinois are from the same hospital, and the uh, genetic analysis found that they are really closely related as well. So why do we have to concern uh, about candida oris emergence? The first is that these um, species are really multidrug resistant, and um, in fact, they 
resist to most of the antifungal agent. Second, this species is really difficult to identify by laboratory method. So it can be misidentified in the lab without specific technology. And misidentification may lead to inappropriate treatment because um, we just use the usual empirical treatment for antifungal, so it could be missed. And as I mentioned before, that um, most of the cases in the United States are, are happen in the nosocomial setting, and the genetic analysis file is really has a really close. So it, it, it can cause the outbreak in the healthcare setting. So rapid identification of COREs in hospitalized patients is really important. The one of the most difficult to deal with candida species is identification. So candida auris can be misidentified by a routine uh, laboratory test, including YTEC2 and API 20C AUX. Maditov is one of the best systems to identify candida auris. However, not all devices of Maditov um, including see all this in the database. So you need to update the database of the Malditov so they will be able to identify see all this. But anyway, it's still one of the best choice to, to, to detect this uh, species. Another technique to identify see all this is the molecular method doing the DNA sequence at the 28S rDNA. This one and can also identify see all this as well. So we need a really really advanced technique to identify this uh, candida. Other method, uh, other than um, Malditov and the sequence, may not be able to distinguish the auris. And actually, they can be misidentified to other species as well. Most important is this one, candida hemoronii. If you do the white text or API, and it appears to this species, uh, you should uh, suspect that it might be C. auris. Also, some of the Malditov as well can be misidentified to um, Candida hemorrhoidae species. So other species could be, the lab could be reporting as um, Candida formata, Candida sage, Candida species, Saccharomyces or Lodotorula. That uh, could be possible to uh, C. auris as well. Uh, so what antifungal agent used to treat C. auris. So this is really uh, difficult because no established MIC breakpoints at the moment. Nearly all of the isolates are highly resistant to fuconose, so fuconose is not the choice. More than 50% of C. auris were resistant to valiconose, and only one third were resistant to M4 tercin B using the MIC more than two, and a few uh, isolate were resistant to echinocandin, so probably echinocandin is one of the of the best and antifungal to be used nowadays. Some of the C. auris have elevated MIC to all three major class of antifungals, so it's multidrug resistant. So, what is the mechanism of antifungal resistance in Candida auris? Basically, it's unclear, so we don't know what is the exact mechanism. But what we know is that these species are closely related to Candida hemoronii, in which this species, also known for its intrinsic resistance to M4 tercin B and fuconosol, so they probably have the same mechanism of resistance. Uh, from the, the study, uh, the resistance could be uh, due to the antifungal pressure with rapid mutational changes. And the gene in this species, what they found is that ERK3, ERK11, FKS123, and the transporter family of ABC and MFS also found in this species. So it could be the mutation of some of this gene, but it need to uh, be further investigated. So what are the clinical syndrome? of C. auris infection. Uh, most of the C. auris isolated in the lab are the colonization, but there are three clinical syndrome has been reported. The first case was otitis from Japan that I mentioned before, but stream infection and wound infections are also reported. And 
some of the isolate found in respiratory secretion and urine, but it could be the true infection or just a colonization. Uh, the risk factor to acquire Candida oris infection are similar to those with um, other Candida species, including diabetes mellitus, recent surgery, antibiotics, and the presence of uh, CVC. That's similar to other risk uh, for candidiasis. So how it spreads? Now it's still under investigation by CDC. So please click on the CDC website to see the report from the CDC. And it appears primarily uh, not so commonly spreading. And um, people who are traveling to the country where Candida oil is emerged is not increasingly, so don't worry, just keep traveling. Yeah. So, but what they know is that this um, Candida spread in the hospital, so it's uh, assume that it could be spread from the contaminated surface of the equipment, for example, the blood pressure cuff, or person-to-person -person transmission, also possible. So now they have reported in um, 11 countries, could it be epidemic? Uh, at least two countries had healthcare outbreaks of the oral infection, and colonization involved more than 30 patients each. So it's possible, so it could be epidemic. And, um, they found a high degree of chronology within the same hospital. So it's come from the same strain and transmitted within the healthcare facility. So it's still uh, possible. So the last slide, how to stop it. So it's like the infection control, like other resistant bacteria. So the hospital must develop a policy to prevent and control the infection of this pathogen and uh, strictly uh, follow the infection control before and after contact with the hospitalized patient. Staff and visitors should clean their hands at all appropriate time. Staff and visitors should wear personal protective equipment, such as gloves and gowns, before going into the patient's room. Surface and equipment should be disinfected with a chemical that can kill the fungi. And staff and visitors should cover their coughs and sneezes with their elbows. That is pretty much the same as a uh, standard precaution. Okay, thank you very much.